You guys probably came here in order to find out how to do some Marley effects, but before I start, I just want to make a few announcements. First of all, this is going to be a part of a series, and in this series, I'm going to be teaching people how to do effects that I might not even know how to do. I'm going to research them, and I'm going to make tutorials about them showing people how to make them. So recently, I made a survey, and if you have ideas, you can leave them in the comment section of this video. And if I find your your ideas interesting or viable, I might, you know, turn them into a video. Second announcement is everything you see used in this video, it's going to be in the description below. Uh, one thing you're going to see is universe plugins. You're going to get an uh, exe file in order to get them. Just run that exe file. Don't worry, it's not a virus. I've checked it. I've done it. I don't have a virus. It's okay. Alright, final announcement, I'm going to leave timestamps to every single effect in the description down below. In total, there will be four effects. Two of them, I'm going to combine into one section. Alright, let's start. So first effect that I'm going to be doing is going to be uh, the spray effect. What you want to do, go into your edit tab, click Control i import your video. Okay, now I imported and I dragged it into my timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and find where I want the effect to be. And again, B is for the blade tool, A is for the select tool. Alright, there we go. I have my clip. I aim in, I shoot, and I start reloading. I want to go into my effects library, go into effects, and drag on an adjustment clip. Keep in mind, I'm pretty sure they only implemented adjustment clips in DaVinci Resolve 16. So if you're in DaVinci Resolve 17, uh, sorry, 15, please update. Alright, I'm going to scale down my adjustment clip, then I'm going to go back into my media pool and import my headshot sound effect and my gun sound effect. So I have both right here. Here's the gun sound effect. It's a little loud. Beautiful. I'm just going to use that first first, so I'm going to delete the rest. Alright, I'm gonna drag it over, and then I have the headshot sound effect. You can hear the racking of the bolt at the end. You can cut that out by dragging it close, and using that little, little thing on the corner in order to fade out. You can also drag the circle around in order to change the curve of the fade. It's a bit too much. Just play with it. There we go. I like how that sounds. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to find where I start shooting, which is right here. And I'm going to put the first peak of the sound effect on that shot. So right there. And it basically perfectly matches. It cuts off when I stop shooting. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and cut my video where the the gun sound effect starts and i'm gonna cut it again after it ends so i have this section and i have this section at the end i'm also gonna find the section where i actually get the kill which is right there pretty much and cut it again so now i have start shooting get the kill and then no effect should be here I'm going to drag down my adjustment clip and I'm going to zoom in. So you're going to need universe plugins for this. I'm going to leave a link for them in the description. Now you want to go into effects library, go open effects and search glow in the search bar and find uni.edgeglow and drag it onto your adjustment clip. You can see that it starts barely glowing. We're going to fiddle with these settings. First of all, you want to go into your inspector. Uh, click colorize. I like to change my tint color to a pink and what we want to do maybe increase the edge detect a bit maybe decrease the glow radius increase the brightness maybe decrease the saturation a bit just play around with it find something you like it won't be this bright constantly I'm gonna show what we're gonna do with it so now that you have your edge glow on it find the peak of that sound effect 
which is right here on this frame and go one, two, three, back, click Edge Detect and set it to zero. Then go one, two, three, click that keyframe button again and set your Edge Detect to whatever you wanted to. Mine was set to 170. And then go one, two, three again, hit that button again and set it to zero again. And what you wanna do, take your blade tool and cut it there and you can delete the rest of the adjustment clip. So now what you see is it starts glowing and then goes away. What you can also do is instead of setting it to zero, set it to something like 30. So the glow doesn't uh, completely go away, but it's not very visible. There we go. All right. Now what else we want to do is we want to add a little bit of a uh, zoom in. So what you want to do, go to the beginning. Click zoom, go three frames forward by hitting your right arrow key three times. Click it again and set the value to something like 1.15. And you can see it zooms in a bit. And then go another three forward, hit it again and set it to one. Now you can see it zooms in and it glows. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold alt and click and drag and it copies them and we're gonna copy them for the duration of our clip, so until there. That doesn't look great, but it's gonna look better. Next, we probably wanna work on the kill effect. What you wanna do is go into your effects library, open effects, and search, search for chromatic, chromatic aberration, uni chromatic aberration and put it on the bottom clip, not on the adjustment layers, on the bottom clip. You wanna go and fiddle around with the settings. I like to play around with the scale of the individual colors. Like for example, that looks good. We go a few frames after we get the kill. I like going two, one, two, click, set master distortion to quite a large amount. Go back to the beginning of the clip, set it to zero. And while you're at that, set your master scale to zero too. And set it to something like around one. There we go. And then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames forward and set both to zero again. Now we're gonna work on the dent on the kill. So go to effects library. Now we're gonna work on that bulge effect that happens when you get the kill. So go effects library, open effects, uh, search dent, and drag it onto your clip. Go into your effects tab, select dent, set size to one, dent type to type two. Go to the beginning, click strength, and set it to 0.35. Go one, two, three, forward. Set strength something higher. I would say maybe Maybe 0.45 and then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and set it to 0.35 again. Now that we have the spray effect done, let's start on the zoom in. So go to the beginning, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, select that clip, click zoom, go over to the end, click zoom again and set it to something like 2.0, maybe a bit more, maybe like 2.5, yeah. And now select this clip and that clip and set the zoom to 2.5. And now go over to this clip, set the zoom to 2.5, click the keyframe button, go forward one, two, three, four, five, and set it to one. It's a bit laggy to the towards the middle, but you get the idea. You have your zoom in, you have your glow, you have your pulse in and out, and then you have your chromatic aberration and your dent. And then you have your zoom out. I forgot to mention this, but also drag in your um, headshot sound effect and put it, position it so the peak of the audio goes at the beginning of this clip. All right, now that we got that done, let's move on to the second effect, which is gonna be the rainbow effect 
and the pop out uh, kill feed effect. All right, now that I have my clip, I'm gonna be using this kill feed right here. What I wanna do is I wanna find where the kill feed is stationary. So that frame right there, that one. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna hold alt and I'm gonna drag up to duplicate that singular layer. All right, now go into your color tab. What you wanna do is go over to this window tab and click plus on the linear. In order to zoom in, use scroll wheel. In order to move these points around, use your um, left click. And if you wanna move around on the screen, hold middle mouse button and move your mouse. What you're gonna wanna do is move these points to the corners of the kill feed. Like so. Let me just straighten them out. All right. Now that you have that, you can right click here, click add alpha output and drag it in. You won't see any changes right now. If you want to see changes, you can just, um, you can just click disable video track. Now you see that there's a little bit of a border around it. If you want to get rid of that border, you can just decrease these softness values. I like keeping about 0.5 border, just so it's not a harsh cut. And I like keeping 0.5 on all sides. If you don't want to see this, you can go over here and click off. And you can see that there's a little bit of a border, but not too much. Now go to edit. You can enable that video track again. Go over to your top clip, which is the one you edited. Take the zoom and position. Go forward one, two, three, four, five frames. Hit them again and zoom in and position. until your kill feed is bigger and make sure to hide the old one because we're not masking it out. Now you can see that it just gets bigger. And if you want, you can go to the end, go back five frames, one, two, three, four, five, hit zoom, go to the end, hit zoom and position again, set zoom to one, set position to zero, position X to zero, and it should shrink back. There we go. That was the baseline for the enlarged kill feed. Now I'm going to go over the rainbow effect that he does. So first of all, I'm going to want to import the um, slot machine jackpot sound effect. Put it under it, you know, decrease the sound a bit. Cut it. Add a bit of a fade out. And then I'm going to click the top clip and go back into color. Now I want to go over to this wheel tab. Tick the keyframes for corrector and sizing. Go over to hue and set it to zero. Go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and set the hue to a hundred. And now go another fifteen keyframes. One, two, three. set hue to zero, and etc, etc, and repeat for the whole length of the clip. And at the end, when you reach the end, just set the hue to 50, which sets it back to the original hue. And now you can see that our kill feed is changing colors. That's all there is for that effect. It's so much simpler than this one. Alright, for the final effect, I'm going to be teaching you how to do his subtitles. So go into effects library. Go titles and find basic title, drag it in, change the text to anything you want, and then go into font family and find the name of the font that I left in the description below. It's going to be called Mikado Bold Demo, which is the font he uses. You can change the color here to anything you want. For example, I could change it to an orange. 
And if you scroll down, you can find stroke. You can't really see it on a black background. So I'm just gonna change the stroke to white so you can see it better. As you can see, you can increase the size and decrease the size. He would usually use a stroke of five, I would say, for this size text. But the smaller the text, the less stroke you should use. All right, and he usually also adds a small animation to the text whenever it pops in. So what you wanna do, go over to zoom, keyframe that, set the zoom to like 1.25, go over one, two, three, four, five frames, and set the zoom to 1.9, sorry, 0.9, and then go over one, two, and set the zoom to one. And as you can see, the text kind of pops in. This isn't exactly what he uses. It's close enough. You can even um, decrease the initial value of the zoom to like 1.15 or something. But it's all up to you. Thanks for watching. I hope I explained well enough. If I didn't, you know, leave which part you, you guys didn't understand in the description down below. I'll be sure to get to it and explain more. Thanks for watching, and here's the final result. Oh, <laughs>